Welcome back to Crux Stationalis. Today we head to the Roman Station Church of Santa Maria Maggiore, or in English, Saint Mary Major. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. And when you're done watching, share it with your family and friends. We have explored Santa Maria Maggiore multiple times here at Crux Stationalis, but today I want to explore one devotion in particular, a devotion which defines Rome, that is Salus Populi Romani. The Madonna Salus Populi Romani, in English, Salvation of the Roman People, salvation in the sense meaning protectress, is the title given in the 19th century to the Byzantine icon depicting the Madonna and Child, found in the Pauline or Borghese Chapel of the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome. This expression dates back to the legal system and pagan rituals of the ancient Roman Republic. During the reign of the Roman Empire, there were temples dedicated to the Salus Publica Populi Romani, that is, the health of the Roman people, a goddess depicted as a young woman enthroned with a snake. Only under the empire of Theodosius I, who abolished pagan cults, did this title become an attribute of the Mother of God. The icon is believed to be from the first Christian millennium, according to tradition painted by Saint Luke himself. For centuries, the icon was placed above the door of the baptistry of the basilica, and in 1240, as evidenced by a document, it was given the title of Regina Celi, Queen of Heaven. It was later moved to the nave, and from the 12th century, it was kept in a marble tabernacle. Since 1613, it has been placed above the altar of the Pauline Chapel, which was built especially for this icon. The Roman Pontifical offers further information regarding its origins. It says, the Liberian Basilica, now called Santa Maria Maggiore, was founded by Pope Liberius, who reigned from the years 352 to 366, and was restored and enlarged by Sixtus III. Pope Liberius selected a venerated image which was hung in the papal oratory and was probably brought to Rome by Saint Helen, mother of Constantine, in the fourth century. Large in size for an icon, measuring 117 by 79 centimeters, it is a Byzantine style painted on a cedar wood base. The work represents the Virgin, who wears a dark blue cloak trimmed with gold over a violet dress, with the child Jesus in her arms. Jesus holds a book in his left hand, and with his right he makes a gesture of blessing. Furthermore, the figure of Jesus has his eyes turned towards his mother who instead turns with her gaze directly to the observer. While neither wears crowns, the presence in Mary's right hand of a mapula, a sort of ceremonial embroidered handkerchief, an imperial symbol, signifies that this image is probably one of the type showing Mary as queen of heaven, Regina Celi. The Greek letters at the top on the gold background identify Mary as the mother of God, as is usual in Byzantine art. Historically, it is the most important Marian icon in Rome despite the fact that its devotion has declined over the centuries in favor of other sacred images, such as Our Lady of Perpetual Help, which sits just down the street from St. Mary Major. Despite this, at least since the 15th century, it has been venerated as a miraculous image and was later adopted in particular by the Jesuits to spread devotion to the Mother of God through the movement of the Sodality of Our Lady. It regained its primacy thanks to Pope Pius XII, he honored it when he proclaimed the dogma of the Assumption of Mary in 1950 and sent it in procession through the streets of Rome in 1953 to begin the first Marian year in the history of the church. In 1954, the icon was crowned by the pontiff himself as Queen of the World at St. Peter's Basilica. Currently, the jewels, the necklace, and the precious crowns affixed on that occasion to the figures have been removed. Nonetheless, the icon has always been the object of a particular devotion on the part of the popes. In 593, Pope Gregory the Great carried the Marian icon in procession to put an end to the plague that was raging in Rome at that time. In 1571, Pope Pius V prayed to the icon to implore victory in the Battle of Lepanto. In 1837, Pope Gregory the XVI prayed to her to ask for an end to a cholera epidemic. And recent popes have also spread devotion and prayed before the Salus Populi Romani. 
Santa Maria Maggiore is the first church in the city of Rome desired and built not by the emperor but by the Roman people themselves after the Council of Ephesus, which in 431 had recognized Mary the Mother of God, the Theotokos. The Theotokos of the Liberian Basilica is not just an ecclesial devotion. The city herself is devoted to Mary Salus Populi Romani. Both the Bishop of Rome and the Capitoline people are historically linked to Maria Salus Populi Romani, a bond which in this case was also joined by a third, that of St. Ignatius of Loyola, who entrusted the mission of the nascent Society of Jesus to the particular protection of the Liberian Theotokos. Not only a third, but many saints have in the record of their life a devotion to the Madonna Salus Populi Romani. You tell a Roman, oh, my patron, or oh, this saint, said a special prayer before Our Lady or made a vow before her. The response, ah, yeah, Jacob, so did many other saints. Besides the occasional lackluster response from a Roman, this shows the intercession and the protection of Mary, the salvation of the Roman people. She takes her children under her care, under her mantle, and they become saints. One example is that of St. Paul of the Cross, of whom we speak often at Crux Stationalis. He took upon himself a fourth religious vow, kneeling before the Madonna Salus Populi Romani. This vow became the fourth vow of the Passionist congregation, to keep the memory of the Passion upon the heart and to spread the same devotion to others. It is not possible to establish the exact period in which the icon of the Madonna de Otokos, said to be according to tradition of St. Luke, was placed in Santa Maria Maggiore. However, there is a certain antiquity regarding the centuries-old cult and veneration of this effigy considered miraculous. As already stated, it is documented that Pope Gregory the Great, already in 593, brought the Salus Populi Romani in procession with an impressive concourse of faithful, from Santa Maria Maggiore to San Pietro, to implore the cessation of the plague. Veneration by the Bishop of Rome and the faithful took on the aspect of a solemn act of filial Marian piety every year on the Feast of the Assumption, starting from the pontificate of Leo IV, who reigned from the years 847 to 855, up to that of St. Pius V, who reigned from the years 1504 to 1572, the solemnity was celebrated with imposing processions which moved from the Basilica of St. Lawrence to that of Santa Maria Maggiore. In 1377, following the Avignon papacies, Gregory XI, followed by an immense crowd, went to the Basilica to give thanks to the Salus Populi Romani for the return to Rome of Peter's successors. In the 16th century, devotion to the icon was extremely popular in Rome, Julius III, who reigned from the years 1487 to 1555, mindful of his ordination in this basilica, on Laetare Sunday of the year 1550, sent a golden rose in homage to the Liberian image as a sign of filial affection and to implore special help for fathers gathered in the Council of Trent. Even the popes of more recent times have shown their devotion to the Madonna of Santa Maria Maggiore. These are just a few examples of centuries-old manifestations of popular piety. In the 16th century, however, the fathers of the Society of Jesus were undoubtedly the first to bring and to spread the image of the Liberian Theotokos even in the distant regions of the East. The basilica dedicated to the Mother of God had exercised a very particular charm in the soul of the founder of the society, in which the personal devotion of the saint to the Madonna of San Luca was expressed. With his successor, St. Francis Borgia, the third general of the Jesuits, the devotion of the society to the image of Santa Maria Maggiore assumed wider dimensions. The general of the Jesuits was the first to spread the image in the various houses of his order, increasingly orienting the Jesuits to devotion to her. Under his generalate, the cult of the Salus Populi Romani spread rapidly with the first missionaries destined to reach the lands of South America and the Far East, who brought with them copies of the venerated effigy. St. Francis Borgia, in fact, managed to obtain permission from the Pope to reproduce the image, which had never been granted to others before then. The Byzantine icon thus becomes the first globalized image of the Mother of God. In China, in the 16th to 17th century, copies of the painting of the icon of the Salus Populi Romani were brought by Jesuit missionaries to all the areas where they managed to reach. The paintings of the Madonna aroused much interest among the Chinese, as attested to in the life of the Jesuit Matteo Ricci. 
this is just a snippet of the devotion Rome and Romans and missionaries have to Salus Popoli Romani, and I hope you too from this day will grow in devotion to her.